Is that a good result? What do you get to the top? Oh, yeah. 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 All right, so we are the sports team. My name is Shamil. I'm Matt. And why we chose the topic. So I love sports and have a big history with sports. I did Taekwondo for 10 years, starting when I was about 8 years old, all the way until I was 18. Now yeah. I'm a, <laughs> a third-degree black belt. Uh, I play high school water polo and swim, and I, I mean, that was part of my life for like the longest time. And when I was younger, I played baseball and football. So now I just really just like to watch football, baseball, hockey, and basketball. Again, like Chanel, I've done sports all my life. Uh, first, I did Sancho when I was about five. Um, I wrestled for four my four years in high school, and then I've been doing judo since I was about seven years old. Um, sports have become a very big part of my life. It, if I didn't do sports, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Um, and now that I'm kind of phasing out sports, like phasing sports come to shine my life um, and moving on, I do still want to learn, like, you know, different, still want to learn different sports and want to see how they are in different cultures. And yes, I, I drew that Superman speedo. That's what I wore for four years during high school. So life as an athlete in general is extremely tough. Um, with not not just like college athlete, but like athlete outside of school. Um, there's always daily regimen of training, exercise, conditioning, weightlifting, um, practices. <coughs> With very little time in between for anything, um, there's only like light meals for nutrition and recovery. Because if you eat anything too heavy, you're gonna end up throwing up, throwing up a practice. And of course, there's always competitions that you're training for. You'd be traveling everywhere for those. So life as an athlete it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of money. Um, the salaries, again, just like here in the U.S., salaries in Japan are biased towards the big name players, the big names you know. Um, the baseball. Uh, the baseball average uh, yearly salary is approximately four hundred fifteen fifteen thousand dollars, rounding out to about fifty million yen. That's the yearly salary, and of course, that's the average. It can get as high as six million, which is currently the highest, um, the highest in Japan, and as low as forty four thousand um, dollars. Sumo Yokozuma, uh, their monthly uh, monthly salary is twenty four thousand dollars. But they, it is supplemented by both sponsorships and television, like movies and uh, commercials. Uh, judo pro team members average out about $50,000. Um, and of course, again, it goes up and down depending on who you are and how good you are. And for foreign athletes, um, they're usually paid more than Japanese athletes. Like, for example, a uh, guy, Andrew Jones, who I believe played for the Pirates in America. Um, when he went to Japan, he's getting paid about $3 million in Japan, whereas obviously the average in Japan is only a five-figure salary. Um, you can have unlimited amount of American players, or I guess foreign players in your organization, but when it comes to the active teams, you can only have, uh, for baseball, you can only have four. So whether it be on your bench or on the field, you can only have four active players at a time. And for soccer, you can have up to three, but for the Asian uh, Football Confederation, you can have an additional. Uh, they only look for the best of the best, but there are sometimes some exceptions where there are some players in America who kind of lost interest or they're trying to get back into the game. Will go to Japan, like uh, for example, Ryan Vogel's song with the Giants. He was kind of down in the dumps, wasn't sure if he wanted to keep going with baseball. He went to Japan and kind of got his confidence back up playing out there. And um, yeah, and it's good for diplomacy as far as you know foreign um, foreign players, good uh, good relationship with that country. Uh, some notable Japanese athletes in the U.S. Um, there's Masahiro Tanaka, or as he's known in Japan, as Maku. Uh, he plays. He was from the Ratsuken Eagles, and he plays for the Yankees now. Uh, Yu Darvish on the bottom. Um, he played for the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters and came out to America and now plays for the Texas Rangers. Uh, you also have uh, Iwako Misashi, Uehara Koji, and Masasaka Daisuke. Um, now, when they come to America, the process is a little weird because American teams actually have to bid on how much they want to pay for that player to come over. And whoever gets the highest bid, the team obviously gives up the money. And then they have to um, basically negotiate a contract with them. So, for example, like you, Darvish, 
landed a six million, I think six year six six year sixty million dollar deal with the Rangers, and Masahiro Tanaka got a, like a six year next. Uh, high school club sports are huge. It's basically a part of uh, the Japanese, like the younger Japanese identity. Um, these four guys at the bottom, these were my exchange students in high school. The way they introduced themselves to us, they said their name and they immediately said what club they were a part of. Um, so yeah, it's it's good for the teamwork, staying healthy, staying active when you're younger, and it basically just becomes a part of them as a grown up. All right. Um, every October, there is a national holiday in Japan, Tai no Hi, which is the National Sports Day or the, uh, Sports and Health Day. It's celebrated on the second Monday of every October of every year, and it commemorates the 1964 Summer Olympics in Tokyo on, on the opening day. Its aim is to promote a active, sports, healthy lifestyle. Um, a, lot of videos, a lot of videos you'll see are about, like high, especially like animes and stuff, it's like high school sports festivals. Um, a lot of times, there's a lot of activities they do, including opening ceremony and activities and stuff through all, all throughout the day. Um, two types of activities: there's individual activities where you'll be like you know, racing other people, uh, but all, all the fun comes in during the group activities. You get stuff like a relay race, jump rope, tug of war, three-legged races. But then you also get the really we just the, all the out there things. We got the human pyramid. We got like the kids running those giant pants. <laughs> we got <laughs> the balancing exercise. We got the giant chicken fight up top, and then whatever's down at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, every class does a dance, and then they can all dress up depending on what they're doing for their dance. Uh, all right, so for high school baseball uh, in Japan, it's actually like it seems like it's a lot bigger than the American Major League Baseball. Uh, every year, a bunch of high schools get together and they play at uh, Koshien. It's called the Koshien High School Baseball Tournament. It's played at Koshien Stadium, which is the home of the Hanshin Tigers. And for the duration of the tournament, boys become like gods. This is where they can really show what they're made of um, to other teams. And this tournament is so big, and it's just it's so dear to the players who are playing there that before every game, they would dig up some of the dirt from the fields and keep it. And when they're older, they'll they give it to their kohais as kind of like a gift. Um, so this was probably the biggest game out of the tournament. In 1979, there was an 18-inning game between Serio and uh, Minoshima. Uh, the game was about four hours long. The game was neck to neck. Uh, basically, when one team scored, the other team would score. So basically, it just kept going the entire time. And in the end, um, Minoshima won, but we want to show you guys a little clip of how they won. <laughs> So right now the score is three to two at the bottom of the sixteen. In the bottom of the sixteen, Minoshima came to bat, and Serio got two quick outs. Once again, Serio was just one out away from victory. And then came the fateful pop up. It came towards Kato, who was manning first base. If Kato had caught that ball, the game would have been over. But Kato somehow tripped in foul territory, and the ball cruelly slipped out of his grasp. I mean, it was right under where the ball was dropping, so I looked up one more time to spot it, and for just an instant I lost sight of it. Just as I bent my knees, I saw the ball again and thought, there it is, and then I tripped. Immediately afterwards, On the very next pitch, the batter hit a home run. For the second time, Minoshima had tied the score with two outs, pulling back from the break. Ultimately, the game reached the 18th inning, the maximum permitted by tournament rules. And then... Minoshima scored the walk-off run. So one little mistake by the first baseman ended up costing them the game. So the baseball is so big that this had basically haunted uh, 
Kato, the first baseman. Uh, it was in the national paper all over Japan, and he basically has been ridiculed about it ever since. And even nowadays, he'll still get some crap about you know tripping over that foul ball. Uh, and so chasing the dream. So there's a specific game that certain, only certain players can play. Um, basically, high school players who never got the chance to go get to play in what's called the Masters game. So this is basically their their one shot at playing in the tournament. The only exception is that each player only gets one at bat. So each team has only several dozen players, so they can go through everyone and make sure that everyone gets a chance to play. And then Drew in Japan, it is taken very, very seriously. It's done at every level, just like every other sports thing, taken from like kids all the way up to national level and pro team levels. Um, the training for it is very, very tough. It's been described by judo players who are currently in MMA and UFC. They say judo training is a lot harder than training for MMA. And then also gen um, the general style of ju judo in Japan is a lot different from what you see from, say, America or Europe or Brazil. Um, Brazil is very a lot more with their jiu-jitsu, do, try to do a lot more chokes and arm bars. Um, Europeans are very big, and they tend to try and grab you and muscle you everywhere. Uh, America is a mixture of both Brazil and European, but in my opinion, I believe the Japanese style is a lot better, where they're a lot more stand-up, back straight, and they move a lot more, and use, use a lot more technique and speed over strength. What is MMA? MMA is mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts, yeah. And then here's a short video of judo. <laughs> After this commercial. <laughs> So if you happen to see a lot of emotion like this, it's because all these throws in this video are taken taken from World Championships, Olympics, all the big tournaments out there. And you'll soon see it's, it's not just many women and not just throws, it's also pins and also chokes. <laughs> he choked him out. He passed out. He passed out. Judo is taken very seriously, and as you can see, in order to be the very best, you have to train like the very best. And I happen to have the opportunity to interview some people in Japan. Kosuke Tanaka is a former 81 kilogram protein member for ALSOC, which is a security company in Japan. Um, his, uh, so I interviewed him, and his schedule was pretty much full of training. The only time he had off was for, say, lunch, dinner, and Sunday. That was all. From 6 o'clock to about 9 o'clock at night, he was training, uh, Monday through Saturday. Um, he also said that having a good sponsor like LSOC, LSOC, has, LSOC as well as other security teams have some of the top teams in the, in the nation. Um, having a good sponsor equals immense pressure. You have to put on a good showing in front of the audience in order to kind of keep your sponsorship, keep your, kind of keep your job. If you don't, you're kind of cut loose. Um, average age for a team member is about 30. However, usually their careers are finished by about 20, age 25 or 26 to make way kind of for the new guys coming out, to, talk, coming out to the teams. And then, unlike in baseball, soccer, and other sports, 
Judo in Japan is strictly Japanese. There is no foreign players on any teams. And then the All Japan Championships is the toughest tournament in Japan. Uh, only select few get to go into there, and it, you, it is used as a tool for selection for members of the World Championship team. I don't have a picture of Eddie Namba, but Eddie Namba is a nursing major uh, sophomore at Keio University. Schedule, again, it's full of practice, but um, her time in between is spent with school, going to class. Um, again, she only gets Sundays off, and she likes to use those, use those Sundays to kind of chill, relax, and go home and go shopping. Um, judo is a part of their schedule all the way from the time they start at the university all the way to when they graduate. There is no time off. You cannot take a semester off. It is always there. Um, also, there's no money in judo unless you're really good. All the salaries, that's only for the people who actually get up to the top. Without, you know, without that skill to get up to the top, you, have, you get no money from judo. And then also, their careers are not very long. And one note she says that usually you're either good at judo or you're really, really smart. You can't be both. <laughs> and then life after sports, um, usually people who take on the sport take it on for life. It is part of them and they are part of it. Um, they usually stay on with any organization or the sport they are with. And they usually become assistant coaches, coaches, or uh, management staff. For instance, the two in the center, this one here, Kosuke, he's actually helping us train right now here at San Jose State. And as well as Shintaro Nakano over here, he used to be the number five guy in Japan. He was on the national team. He was 60 kilos, and he is currently our assistant coach. And then like with baseball, so you grow up with baseball, and basically as soon as you retire, the, the team has a space for you on the team. So now in Japan, unlike America, teams are owned by companies. So, for example, like the Hokkaido and Nippon Ham Fighters, it's owned by the Nippon Ham Packing Company. So, if when a team decides to retire, they can either become part of like the management on the baseball team, or they can go in the, within the company of the packing. And the fans, fans are nuts over there. They're completely nuts. They're crazy. Um, they're com really, really zealous about the sports that you're in for. Um, one of the main ones is baseball. Uh, Hundreds of thousands show up for baseball games, okay? And it can be compared to U.S. collegiate football, where they get all dressed up, get all crazy, and they're filling the stands, they're filling out the parking lots. That's how crazy it gets for just high school baseball in Japan. Um, each one, each fan base is fully invested into the team, both physically and mentally and financially. They, they, they are dedicated to that team. And you're not going to find people, the one occasional person who's um, cheering for another team on the other side of the nation or a different team in the area. No, they are very loyal to their home team, uh, home, home province team. And then here is a small video of the fans. <laughs> Over a period of 15 days, 850,000 spectators descend on Koshi and Slim. The stands overflow with groups of cheering fans. Their intensity rivals that of the players themselves. This is only baseball. Every game from every day of the tournament is broadcast live yeah. around the nation. No other amateur sport in Japan receives this kind of coverage. And just kind of wanted to touch on it a little bit. Um, Sports has gotten really big in the anime scene. Um, so, for example, the three that picked Ice Shield 21, uh, Kuroko no Basuke, and Princess Tennis. And for the Kagoshima interview, so uh, one of the questions I said, well, which sports are popular in Japan? And out of the three that showed up at the second, um, the ones that they said were soccer and baseball were the big ones. And that's why it wasn't popular. Uh, baseball, it's a really old sport. Uh, it's something that all the guys kind of like to get, to get together and play. And soccer is really big on mass media. And so it's really popular <laughs> that and for young people. Uh, I asked where the sports originated from for them. Um, I got baseball was from America. Uh, soccer was from England. And I, asked, I was curious about sumo. And when I asked them, all of them just gave me this really confused look because none of the young people know. <laughs> um, 
what kind of sports do they like? Uh, from the guy, I got baseball and basketball, and from the two girls, we got volleyball and tennis. And I asked uh, if sports were important to them, and they said, yeah, it's good for teamwork, uh, it's good for the body, and it helps relieve a lot of stress. I asked what sports are popular in the Kagoshima area, not just with students, and they said baseball, basketball, and soccer. And then asked them which sports teams they like. They like the, mainly just the Yomiuri Giants. And then I asked, did the Kagoshima students play anything when they were younger? And they said yes. Um, some, some did swimming, some did tennis, some did volleyball. Um, Tennis. <laughs> tennis. <laughs> tennis. 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 Pretty much every sport is just like you can do it all. There's no limit on what you can do. And then I asked if they're more popular with men or women. It's mainly the men who do all the sports, uh, but women do like to do um, volleyball, basketball, and some tennis. And I asked who's their favorite athlete, Ta Tanaka Masahiro. Uh, to compare and contrast the U.S. to Japan, uh, on America, salaries on uh, on average are a lot larger. So in Japan or in America, their average is about seven figures. Yeah, seven figures. Whereas Japan is more five figures. And when and so the players usually go where all the money goes. So for example, um, just recently, there's a pitcher named John Jellister, who just signed with the Cubs to send the Giants because the Cubs offered him more money. Um, they allow for foreign athletes, but majority of them are going to be American, the exception being baseball, where more than half of them are from like the Dominican Republic or somewhere in South America. And um, everyone kind of has their own individualistic training style rather than Japan. Uh, Japan, the athletes are a lot more loyal to and dedicated not just to sport, but the organization that they're playing for. They will usually stay on, and uh, they will usually stay on after they're done. Um, from and we're retiring from active status. Um, their fans are absolutely crazy. It helps make a much, much more or, uh, ener energetic atmosphere for the for not just the fans but also the the players. They, it's great for the players to actually know that the fans are really cheering for them. It gets them all pumped up. And then training is a lot different. I've actually experienced it myself. It is definitely a lot different than what is here in this here in the states. And there's also this thing called Taibatsu, where it, you could probably call it, in here in the States, it would probably be physical abuse. Um, I, was, I actually witnessed it one time at Keio University. Uh, we were doing just repetitive exercises. One of the Japanese guys was going a little bit slow, and the captain walked over and just punched him straight in the face. Wow. Just right, right off the bat and started yelling at him. And the first Japanese guy I was going with, he's like, don't look, don't look, just keep going, just keep going. So that he wouldn't get it. Jeez. So yeah, it it is a real thing. Um, we do kind of do it here in the states sometimes, but I I don't know. Some sometimes I think it's it's good. For sometimes, <laughs> not all the time. Um, I mean, I would probably I would probably get it if I showed it to practice right now. You know, I bring my gi top and my belt, but so, I totally forgot my pants. <laughs> so this so, yeah. Hi, <laughs> once. Um, for pros and cons, um, the pros, obviously, teamwork kind of builds a better relationship amongst other people. Uh, job stability in Japan, especially since when you're once you're done with the sport, you stay with the sport or that company, and it, it uh, helps promote an active lifestyle, keeps you healthy. Uh, cons, it's definitely not as much pay as over here in America. And it's all relative as far as the pay goes, because, I mean, obviously, if you're making enough to survive, then you're okay, but in America, I mean, Money is where, like the center of the world. Also, it's exhausting. You're gonna be working. At, you're gonna be doing training every day from Monday through Saturday, pretty much every hour of the day. You only get Sunday. And come on, it. You all got. You all want a little bit of fun, right? So the solution. The solution. <laughs> 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 I mean, I think it's just physically exhausting for everyone because I mean, it's 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day of just hard physical labor. So I mean, if they were given just a little bit more time off, maybe weekends, their bodies would be a lot more energized and be a lot longer lasting than the climate sport. Um, my opinions: uh, sports is a great way to build teamwork and live a healthy lifestyle, and especially in Japan, where I mean, it's 
not just the players, but also the fans kind of just keep that strong fan base. They're really crazy, but it's like a good kind of crazy, whereas America, they get a little psycho crazy. And um, although it's exhausting, they have you basically, you basically line up with a job right after you're done playing the sport. Uh, getting involved in sports is both a physical and mental test of oneself. I think it's absolutely great, and everyone should be doing it from a young age. Um, the, the National Sports Day, I think, is great to help develop that or to kind of promote that active sports lifestyle. Um, but doing sports at a really young age can help early on develop a strong body, a strong mind, and a good work ethic, which is essential for growing up. Um, and if possible, it can turn into a career, not just as an athlete, but as a coach after, your, after the active years, which is what I kind of want to do. I didn't, you know, judo's not um, become a part of me so much. I don't want to just like cut it off completely. I'll always be in judo, but I do want to kind of teach kids sometimes. And here are our citations. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Was that because you were like yearly and then you said monthly? When yeah, you said well, for, judo, yeah for, for judo, it was a yearly salary. From what wow. I've found, you know, some things it, it only mentioned it was being monthly. Yearly. Okay, that's compared to because you were like 20000 above that with like monthly. Yeah. Dang. Well, and then the first one, like the 44000 that was baseball. That was yearly, right? Yeah. That's also, that 24000 monthly, um, that was only for the grand champion. For <laughs> well, everyone else, it's a lot lower than that. Yeah, that's pretty low. Um, okay, you said there's a limited number of foreign players. Like, define foreign. So, and basically, anywhere else yeah. besides Japan. Yeah. Like. So you can only like, for example, like the team in Japan can only have four active players, like from America. So if an well, American player. So like, if if a player, like, say someone moved to to Japan, like, is it based on citizenship or is it based on birth or is it based on? No, it's just based off like. It's, or it's ethnicity. Based off, it's based off ethnicity and birth. Hmm. Ethnicity and birth. Oh, not, not ethnicity, but mainly it's birth. Birth? Yeah. yeah, so if you were born and raised in America. Well, what if you were born, like I was born in Taiwan, but I mainly consider myself American. As far as an American team goes, you'd probably be an American player. Okay. Now, if you were born and raised in Japan, came out and then came back to Japan, you'd probably be a Japanese player playing in Japan. Okay. Um, that one game with was like Stadio versus um, Minoshima, was yeah. that a high school game? Yep. Yes, that was okay. part of the high school tournament. Okay. That was the finals in that tournament. <clears throat> um, you said the average age of players, or judo players, <laughs> <laughs> um, was like 30, but then they mostly stopped around 25 or 26 years old, so how, how is that discrepancy? How? Uh, there are older guys on the team who can still compete. There are guys who are competing there like 35, 4 years old still, and they're pretty pretty strong. Um, but again, you also have the really young ones that are coming in as well. So it's both the old and the young mixed together. So you get an average age of about 30. <clears throat> Although many people do end up stopping at 25, 26. So you got a high turnover rate at the younger ages than you do at the older ages. But if you make it past that, you can tend to stay? Yes. Okay. How often do you guys practice judo? Well, what time does he stay? Yeah. Monday through Saturday. Um, we only practice, it depends on uh, how active you are. Like me, I don't, I'm not competing so much anymore because I have work. Um, but uh, there's running usually on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays at about 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning uh, with weightlifting after, pra uh, after the 5 30 practice. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Is all um, is all just uh, round loading, <clears throat> which is just fighting uh, from five thirty to seven thirty eight o'clock. Yes. For the high school baseball tournament, what happens to the team that you just win? Or what happens to the team that wins? The players? Do they go on to like professional teams? Yeah. Yeah. Some of them. It's a lot of recognition. recognition. It's definitely a lot of recognition. That that pretty much says you're like the top dog, in you know, for all the younger guys in uh, in baseball. Monetary prize. 
Any prizes? I'm not sure. I didn't actually no, see no. Cause I know, it's like, yeah. And I know because for a lot of like professional, at least baseball wise, they start really young. They usually start around 17, 18, and then kind of work their way up. So that's about the time where they want to make that transition into professional. So like um, no. you and I practice. <laughs> you and I practice Korean martial arts, uh, Taekwondo. How is that, you know, seen in Japan? Because, you know, I want to study over there and I want to practice Taekwondo in Japan. How is that perceived? Mm -hmm. As far as, like, <clears throat> perception goes, I've got I mean, pretty positive perceptions about Taekwondo being done in Japan. As far as, like, the training resumes go, I'm not too sure about that just because I'm not used to Japanese, used to American, so it's like a lot more relaxed, but uh, uh, I think pretty positive reviews in Japan. Chinese Kung Fu's out there too. Yeah. Steve? How does the sport say like uh, American football compared to the others to here? As far as? Like popularity. Popularity? <laughs> American football is not really popular outside of here, except for in like Yeah. London. Except for like the only real exception. Yeah. Uh, we're the only ones who really call it football, so we don't know that like it's for. Yeah, because I mean, I, like, like Americans, it's well as far as like football goes, America, Canada, some parts of Europe, a little bit in Japan, but not too much. I was talking to Nava Sensei about that, and everyone's too small to play baseball, uh, play football. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but yeah, like, I mean, football is just kind of more. I mean, as far as like within the country, I want to say that like baseball is more popular in Japan in comparison. Comparison to American football in America. Yes. yes. Um, two things. For the, the baseball game that you two won, uh, I don't know if I heard it correctly, but was that an aluminum bat? Yes. Because everything before professional, they use yeah, aluminum Yeah, bats. I know that. So I, I was just wondering also, because um, you also mentioned that like, they tend to. Uh, they have like a smaller, a smaller barrel filled compared to like American players. Um, uh, are home runs a huge focus uh, rather than like team work? Mm -hmm. Base hits. Base hits are your bigger focus. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's a lot different because in um, like in America, their stri the strike zone is a lot smaller as compared to Japan's. Because so like Americans kind of have like, yeah, so I know it's, it's weird because Americans are a lot bigger, so you figure the strike zone would be a lot bigger. But Japan, their strike zone's a lot bigger. So, I mean, it's kind of- What's that? How far is it for them? It, mm, I had a clip that I was in the phone. Um, so, for example, act like you're batting. So, he's batting. A normal American strike zone would be from like here, as far as width goes, and then about here, as far as the height goes. Whereas Japan, you probably have like out here. So, like, yeah, so if you so have it goes a- goes like their- their forehead? No, no, well, yeah, it, it can. It's usually like about like their nose, nose to like chin, whereas America it's like to their their the lettering. It actually seems like a little more fun. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of focus on like because I'm like playing baseball and stuff since like having the strike zone from like your elbow to your knee. When you're swinging, it like there's only so many like hits you can have, and. There's only like so many like perfect hits you can make mm -hmm. when that strikes out, and especially or if you have like more room for it and you swing on it, even if it was going to be a ball, uh, you still have more room to swing. So it, it's just weird. Yeah. It's something that I, I, I find interesting. But at least like in American football or baseball, like you've got because it's just such a small strike zone, and a lot of professional guys are a lot bigger and trying to go for the home run, they have a little bit better of an idea of where they want the ball to be. Whereas yeah. in Japan, it's, because it's so much bigger, it's kind of harder to guess where that ball, like where you really want that ball. To be. So wait, do they? So wait, since the strike is the strike zone bigger or just taller? Oh, it's bigger. So like the the actual boxes and they stand to are about the same. No, boxes are about the same. <coughs> How come the judo tournament in Japan is Japanese only? There a specific reason. The, the teams. <coughs> yeah, because all the teams are are purely Japanese. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, all Jap all Japan championships. It's for it's for the university teams. Uh, oh, okay. Junior teams, senior teams, and also the pro teams. It's used as a selection tool for to have to get uh, representatives on the world championship team. Oh, okay, I understand. So, do you know where the world championship is held? 
uh, it changes. Right. I am not sure where they're going to be held next year. It's every, it's either this year or next year, but it's every two years compared to the Olympics every four years. And some say the World Championships is definitely a lot harder than the Olympics. Isn't it kind of right staring at Sorry, it is this combato. <laughs> it is a little bit. Yes. <laughs> but how much did you read into the baseball? How much? Uh, yeah, that's my question. Let's see. Let's see. For me, I read into it because I, I kind of, I guess you could kind of dip your, dip your toe in the water just to test it out. Uh, I just pretty much looked up high school baseball and I saw that one documentary, that, that first one that came up, watched it, and I was like, <laughs> and then from there on, I watched more videos, looked up more. Uh, watched, uh, watched more videos, looked up a lot more articles about it. Um, I especially found this one article. It was very interesting about the uh, lifestyles and between Japanese uh, professional baseball players and American professional baseball players. Some, like, it said that... They're so disciplined that their training regimen and everything is just so disciplined that they're not allowed to have so much fun. They're not even sometimes allowed to wear, to grow mustaches. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, baseball games are crazy. Yes. It's very, very intense. So back to Eric's question about the strike zone. Q and A. So yeah, in America, in Japan, that's a normal strike, but in America, that's way outside. Yeah, you're lucky. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah, you're super lucky. So like in America, your your strike zone, this balls up here, the ball would have to be like over here for it to be like a strike. Uh, I don't think it's a strike. It's just usually like. Just uh, I can see because it's usually like, like a little. <laughs> no, I, also, I think it's also wider from the sense because it's also like it's a strike because if it if the ball goes past you it curves off and stuff as long as it's like caught it's still a strike because it's past you. It so I think it's also wider. And, and it depends on what angle you're looking at it from. Yeah, that too. Wasn't there any changes in curriculum at schools in Japan <sighs> recently? Curriculum change. Oh yeah. So um, early so. Recently, in middle school, what they've been doing is that they've implemented a lot of hip hop dancing to get the students a lot more involved in staying in athletics. So, uh, I don't have a video of it, but it was just like a lot of students, you know, they got started getting more and more into hip hop dancing just to get them kind of more active. And also, is there any um, differences between American? Sports club and Japanese sports club at schools. At schools, like um, what do you call it? Um, varsity team. Mm. So, I mean, as far as America goes, um, like you've got like your. I mean, basically, as for the most part, as far as high school goes, anyone can make the team. But then you've got your not so good players, which are junior varsity, and then you've got your really good players who are varsity, who are kind of more set for. Yeah, that's America. Right? Yeah, bigger for us, players. Japan. Japan, I'm actually not too sure about that. I just know that, um, like, it's a lot more strict. But it's, I mean, it's for everyone to join. Yeah. So everyone can stay in the club as long as they want to play. Yeah. And there's no rank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from what I've seen, there's really no selection process. from like here in America. Uh, and again, like varsity and junior varsity, that's kind of like a like a selection process. Mm -hmm. While well, in I've seen some things in Japan where it, there's yeah, as you said, anyone can come in and there's no ranking and there's like no selection process. Anyone can come in, anyone can stay. Mm -hmm. And you know, once you get in, you stay there you know for entire four years. Until you but here you can change every semester, right? right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well once I know once like once you've gone up into the higher ranks, you stay. You don't, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bump it but otherwise, you can change every semester. Right, you can yeah. change your varsity club yeah. every semester. Any other questions? And the you know, varsity coaches are paid by the government or? I, no, they're paid by the school. By school. Mm, yes. Basically, like varsity coaches and I think junior varsity coaches, they're paid about the same, just about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Japanese coaches are frontier. Mm. Also, it depends around here. Um, if you're, um, say, go to a high school club sport, then yeah, probably by the school. 
So if you go, if you're a high school student going to a club that's outside of the curriculum, outside of school, um, most of the time, most of the time, the coaches are paid through their own club. Like they started the club and they get paid through all the membership fees and everything. Um, but there are some clubs out there who have all volunteer coaches. Like the Jewel Club that I started at it was all volunteer coaches. Why is small no longer popular among no younger people? Sumo? Sumo. I'm not too sure, but I know for sure because I mean they weren't really too sure about them, so like just anything about sumo. But I think because of like not that's like growing anymore, but just like the big popularity about baseball and soccer, that kind of kind of attracts them more to that. And especially they're smaller. I don't think they want to like I mean just I know it's popular like back then, but being bigger and having to I don't think I don't think that really interests them too much with that. Also it also could be um, just media overall with the uh, advertisements and imaging of um, the media. They're all promoting you know fitter, leaner bodies instead of, you know, big sumo bodies. It's uh the media is very biased towards more towards that than they are towards uh, towards sumo. The NHK always broadcast the sumo tournament regularly though. And it, it, older people really love it yeah. to watch it. <laughs> but not younger generation. I think it's just what everyone's growing up with too. Like back then, that was like their main sport, sumo and baseball. Now it's baseball and soccer. I think I saw sumo being broadcasted one time at Mitsuo. Mitsuo? Yeah, oh. over in their in their dining area. Mm -hmm. I think it was broadcasting sumo one day. Any other time?